bom dia a todos, aqueles que se estão a juntar a nós online. Nós vamos iniciar esta sessão um, uh, SCAO High Level Dialogue uh, e uh, a abertura da sessão vai ser feita pela Isabela Vilês, uh, que vem da Escola Secundária de Cascais e que nos vai, num pitch, muito rapidamente, apresentar o seu projeto EU-SDC. Dá-lhe a palavra, está bem, uh, Isabel? Pode estar aí, se quiser. Sim, sim. Já posso? Som para a Isabel, se faz favor. Não tem som? Uh, ah, ok. Tem. okay. okay. Já posso começar? Yes. Ok. Muito bom dia a todos. Uh, presencialmente e online. <risos> em abril eu tive a oportunidade de fazer parte da competição europeia de design espacial que foi criada pela Space Science and Engineering Foundation, que foi criada por sua vez pelo Dr. Randall Perry. Portugal teve a honra de ser um dos sete países que estrearam esta competição e isto com o apoio da Portugal Space e da Ciência Viva. A competição consistia na divisão dos seus participantes em companhias que iriam lutar pela contratação de uma empresa fictícia e tudo isto passou-se em 2121. Este ano consistiu na criação de uma base de investigação científica cujo objetivo era a pesquisa de vida nos mares da, da Lua Europa do, de Júpiter assim como de uma estação espacial. Eu fiz parte da equipa de engenharia estrutural, cujo objetivo era criar em si as estruturas, e era a parte assim mais criativa, mais de desenho, e depois eu em especificamente fiquei encarregue de criar o modelo 3D da estação espacial. Esta experiência mostrou-me que nada se faz sozinho, e ajudou-me a sedimentar a minha convicção de que quero seguir a astrofísica como carreira, assim como também me ajudou no lado interpessoal, da responsabilidade e do trabalho de equipa. Aqui um, vejo Portugal com muito orgulho a participar nestas iniciativas, nomeadamente o USDC, que é a competição, mas também no SCALE como um país membro. E mostra que a cooperação internacional e a cooperação de várias partes com um objetivo comum é muito importante. Uh, novamente, dá-me legitimamente um orgulho enorme ver Portugal com estas iniciativas para divulgar a ciência, nomeadamente a ciência espacial, entre a comunidade, em específico os mais jovens, porque são o futuro do país e, e do mundo, claro. E mostra que juntos somos mais fortes. Obrigada. Oh, muito obrigada, Isabel. Eu passo agora a palavra ao Cláudio Melo, que se junta a nós online e a quem eh, passo a pasta, digamos, de coordenar eh, e moderar esta sessão SCAL. Está a nos ouvir bem, Cláudio? Bom dia, bom dia. Sim, sim. Eu agradeço a Isabel pela, pelas palavras e pela essa história né, de inspiração. Né, e como ela fechou a intervenção dela, é muito certo. Né, juntos é, podemos mais. Né, e esse é a, o grande exemplo né, desse tipo de, é, de exercício né, de cooperação internacional para fazer coisas difíceis. Né, coisas difíceis requerem é, recursos extraordinários, né, mentes brilhantes né, e muita vontade de cooperar. Uh, I'm going to switch to English because most of the of the panel are like, we have a mix from from people from all over, right? That our SKA is is an international um, cooperation, international effort. So let me start here with um, with a few introductory words. Right? So good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome everyone to this thematic session a high-level dialogue on the Square Kilometer Array Observatory dedicated to generate a high-level dialogue 
where we take a closer look at the uh, SKA Observatory. The SKA Observatory is a newly born intergovernmental organization of which Portugal is a founding member with the ambition to bring together a wealth of the finest scientists, engineers, and policymakers to build the world's largest radio telescope. So to elaborate on the contribution of the SK Observatory to our understanding of the universe and the interplay between science, industry, and diplomacy, and the catalytic role of the SK Observatory in bringing all those dimensions together, we brought here that you see on your screen uh, an outstanding panel with representatives of the SK Observatory, scientific community, government officials of the member countries, and key players in the innovation business. Okay. So the motto of the Science uh, 2021, the Ciencia 2021, is science that builds tomorrow and transforms the economy. This is a great match with the topics that we will address here in the session today. So before we start, I would like to thank you all members of the panel, their generosity to make room in their busy agendas and share with us the views, experience that will help each one of us to connect the different bits and pieces of the societal impact of the SKA Observatory. Uh, final comment on the format of the session. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the session starts with a talk by Professor Phil Diamond, the SKA Observatory Director General, who will give us an overview of the observatory in all areas that SKA is expected to have a measurable impact. And after that, I will ask uh, specific questions to all panel members to address different aspects of this impact. To make the session a real dialogue, I invite all members of the, of the panel to jump in and make comments and ask uh, additional questions. Okay. So the audience, I believe in the YouTube chat and on the live stream of the event that we will try to answer towards the end of the session. I think, uh, I believe this is all I have to say. So again, for being here, uh, Phil, please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claudio. Can you hear me okay? So hello to everyone. And uh, I thank you uh, to, to Minister Haito and to uh, Ricardo Conde for the invitation uh, to talk today. Sorry for my unusual background. I'm actually on the first day of my holiday. Um, so uh, excuse the, the background, any background noise. Um, I shall talk for a few minutes now to just describe uh, the, uh, the areas beyond uh, where we expect to, uh, to have significant impact on, on society. So, KA it, itself is a, it's a as, as Claudio has just said, is it's a new uh, uh, observatory, a new intergovernmental organization, and our job is to build and operate uh, the next generation radio astronomy observatory. That will be two telescopes, uh, a low frequency radio telescope situated in Western Australia. You can see a uh, an artist's impression of that in the bottom left picture there, uh, and a mid-frequency uh, array of radio telescopes, 197 15 meter class dishes in South Africa. And you can see an artist's impression uh, in the bottom right, actually in uh, with uh, real photographs of this uh, array, which will be incorporated uh, within the SKA. The whole observatory, which is uh, governed by a, a convention, uh, was born on the 4th of February of this year. And uh, it's headquartered in, in the UK. Uh, in addition to the telescopes and the observatory itself, uh, the, the network will be supported by, the, the observatory will be supported by a global network of regional centers, uh, which provide access to the SKO data. I have a in a start short uh, and is due to be complete in 2028, 2029 with a, a first decade uh, of construction and operations costs of about 2 billion euros. 
Scottish districts there, uh, we have a, a, a plan for two and a half thousand dishes across South Africa and up to a million antennas across uh, Australia. Just to show the global reach of the observatory, um, you see there's uh, 16 countries uh, are currently participating. We have seven full members. Um, actually, China formally became a full member today. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, actually it was on Saturday. It was on Saturday, excuse me, uh, so two days ago. Uh, so we have seven full members, and as Claudio has said, Portugal was one of the founding members uh, of the observatory, for, for which I am extremely pleased. Motto that we're one observatory, two telescopes across three continents. But as you can see, our partnership spreads across the uh, East. We are, of course, building the observatory to do science. And I don't have time to go into the, the scientific goals. Suffice to say that uh, it's a huge range of science that will be enabled by I think, I think lost field, right? So, uh, can you, anyone from from the uh, from the technical support just let me know who's connected, so I can I can move on with the questions. Oh, Phil's back. Hi, Claudia. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Phil. Yeah, I'm very sorry. My laptop died. Um, I do apologize for that. Uh, could, could I ask that the slides be controlled from uh, uh, from from Portugal? Could Vasco control the slides for me? Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me try and do this on my mobile phone. Um, so we are building the uh, the, the SKA uh, to observe the the, the universe. Um, but as in any large re research infrastructure these, these days, science is only part of what we plan to do. Uh, research excellence, uh, it, it, it's, it's part of a much bigger picture. And we must now, as we work to, uh, to spend all of this taxpayer's money on, uh, on, on such things, uh, we must understand what the impact of a large facility such as SKA uh, will, will be. So past research infrastructures do give strong evidence of the impact. And for radio astronomy in particular, um, we, we have specific examples such as uh, Wi-Fi, um, the, uh, the, the translation of uh, imaging techniques into medical imaging, spacecraft tracking, GPS, etc. Next slide, please. So we, we also, we, we look uh, in terms of our impact towards the, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And we have the advantage, being a young organization, 
um, that we, we're able to start the, these things from uh, really from the ground level. And so we've looked at this very carefully and we will be uh, uh, contributing in our own way, uh, which is, 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 is fairly modest, but we will be doing so to 11 of the sustainable development goals. And our strategy is to uh, ensure that we maximize our impact across these goals. Next slide, please. Um, so just in terms of economic impact, uh, a critical factor uh, for, uh, for countries that participate in the SKA is that a minimum of 70% of their contribution to the capital cost of construction will be spent in that country's industry. And the industry covers a wide range of high-tech uh, activities listed on the screen there. Modern uh, data communications, fiber optics, digital signal processing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, a lot of it in, in very complex software uh, as well. The SKA uh, is, is largely a software telescope. That's where much of the innovation is happening. Uh, next uh, click, please. Um, but there is also, beyond construction, there would, will be some long-term re return. And Minister Hightor, in particular, was asking me about this in a conversation we had uh, a few weeks ago. And one aspect, it's not the only one, but one aspect is that the SKA will require a global network of what we call SKA regional centers, each with powerful computing and data storage resources. And these are the interface, the portal for scientists to access SKA data. And just as an example, Portugal uh, has uh, a modest number, but uh, very high quality scientists and engineers from the Engage SKA consortium who are participating in the, de the design efforts for the regional centers. And in fact, Peter Quinn, who is one of the speakers, uh, is coordinating that effort. Uh, which is, uh, is ongoing. Next slide, please. There are other uh, contributions to society uh, as well. And I just touch on a couple very briefly here. We're working very closely with the indigenous community in, in Western Australia, the Wajiri Yamaji. Uh, it, it's very pleasing to see what our South African colleagues have managed to do in terms of human capital development. Uh, across Southern Africa. It's uh, fantastic in bringing new, uh, new talent uh, into science, technology, and engineering. And there have been benefits that have flow, uh, flowed from uh, the SKA-related efforts uh, into assisting within the pandemic. And the, the most outstanding example is uh, our colleagues from the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory uh, designing uh, and construction of 20,000 uh, non-invasive ventilators. Uh, I think this has been a, a, an amazing story. Next slide, please. Uh, we also, um, I think, are a, 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 a high-profile element in science diplomacy. And I'm sure Dan Detoy will, will talk to things like this. Any major research infrastructure helps foster international connections and encouraging the government level interactions. And you can see here somebody well known in Portugal, Carlos Modas, standing in front of our art exhibition, which was commissioned for the SKA. In the bottom there, the uh, uh, ex-British uh, science minister, David Willits. Uh, there's a group from the BRICS countries visiting South Africa and most recognizable in the top right, uh, President Xi of uh, China and President Ramaphosa of South Africa standing in front of a meerkat, uh, the first meerkat image of the Galactic Center. All of this um, is part of the, the sort of soft impact of a research infrastructure. Next slide, please. Um, sustainability is also at the heart of what we uh, want to do. Um, power consumption for our telescopes is a, a significant factor. It's our largest single operational cost, actually. Our design is insisted on low power digital signal processing equipment. Uh, and in both Australia and South Africa, we're looking at 
uh, solar power systems to provide the power to the, the telescopes. And in the image, that is a real photograph of uh, the solar voltaic power system in Western Australia for the, the ASCAP telescopes. We will build something three times larger. And of course, we're, we're looking towards the human element of this in terms of uh, the evolution of meetings driven by the pandemic. Next and I believe final slide. So the SKAO is now established. It will <coughs> soon start construction of the SKA telescopes. Our primary mission is science, uh, the exploration of the universe, but we do recognize that role to play to society itself and we'll be delivering impact wherever and whenever we can because the innovation that we require covers many, many areas. So uh, working, working together, I think, means working better. Thank you very much. And I, I do apologize for my technology failure. I don't know what happened to my laptop. It's still dead. OK, over to you, Claudio. Thank you very much, Phil. Thank you very much. And uh, I think, yeah, I mean, we had this technical glitch, but um, thank you for recovering that uh, very quickly. So thanks for this uh, comprehensive overview, um, Phil. Short, but yet with a lot of content, right? On this uh, wonderful enterprise that uh, make an observatory like at scale of the SKA to move from an idea into a real thing and deliver the uh, spectacular results that we all expect from it. So in this sense, I'd like to start uh, asking a question uh, with you, which may be already a tough question. Right? As a building a, a facility like SKA uh, on time, on specs, on budget, which is the dream of any uh, project manager, right? is already a titanic task per se. Right? But in addition to that, as you said in your presentation, SKA is born in a time where we need to consider aspects beyond science and, and engineering. Right? So the ecological footprint how we operate matters, the values of the organization, uh, they do matter, uh, the dialogue and the cultural respect from stakeholders at large also matter, and so on and so forth. So how, uh, how does the observatory plan to incorporate those uh, sustainability aspects, sustainability here in terms of ESG, right? It, from the beginning, you said that you incorporate, but it means that it is already part of the strategy of the observatory. Uh, yes, very, very much so. That they're actually built in. Uh, so some aspects are built into the convention itself, uh, where, as as you will know, um, a convention is is ratified by governments, and uh, it's not the sort of thing that is is changed easily. So as the convention was being written, uh, the 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 governments, our, our partner nations, uh, recognised the need. Uh, to, to build in uh, the, these things into the, uh, into the DNA of the observatory. And as I said, being a new organization, we, uh, we have incorporated these into our, our values, our mission statement, uh, and we, we intend to follow uh, all of these aspects and, and put time and resources in, into ensuring that we deliver uh, on this uh, on, on all aspects of, of these as, as we move forward. Fundamentally, we recognize we're global citizens. We, uh, we, we are responsible to spend uh, taxpayers' money uh, in, in, a, uh, in a judicious fashion uh, and, and, to, and to look after the planet on which we live as well. So we're building these in right from the start. Uh, and we'll, and I, I do say to my my team that we uh, will absolutely walk the walk. So thank you very much. I think this um, I mean, it's a very powerful work, right? That we are a, a global citizen, right? So uh, and it's uh, and, and you need to, to inspire people and be role models. So and this uh, is a great message. Look, I I think we're gonna touch many more aspects of your presentation later on, but before. Uh, we, we we dive deeper into the uh, the broader societal impact. I'd like uh, to to talk a little bit about science, right? We have a few astronomers here in, in the panel, and I'd like to start asking uh, Dr. Sonia Anton, 
who is the uh, researcher at the uh, Center for uh, Research and Development in Mathematics and Applications, and a member of the Engage SK, which has been, as you said, Phil, has been the consortium articulating the Portuguese uh, participation in the pre-construction phase of the of SK. Right. Sonia, could you share with with the audience uh, watching this panel, what's your field of research and what we expect that SK will bring to this field of research? Sure. Welcome. Uh, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I take this opportunity to, to greet my colleagues on, on the panel. So um, let me just uh, begin by a more general um, view of SKA and, and, and tell you that I think that SKA is the very first telescope that combines three very important parameters. Its ability to detect extremely weak signals plus with great detail and plus for a vast number of systems. And this is quite unique in the radio uh, telescope. So this will allow us to uh, produce the most detailed 3D map of the distribution of matter over the cosmic time. And, uh, and so from the very large uh, scale of the universe to the very small regions like those, for instance, concerning the formation of planets. And not only the, now how the, the, the matter is distributed, but also to characterize it and to, in, and to know more about physical processes that uh, are occurring there. So this quantity and quality of data will enable us to, to advance in, in very different areas of knowledge from cosmology, fundamental physics, up to astrobiology. And uh, so we will be uh, in position to discuss uh, open questions like dark matter, dark energy, gravity in, in very extreme conditions, uh, the evolution and formation of uh, the first galaxies and stars, which is my area of research. And also in the astrobiology, we will uh, uh, be in position to, 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 to progress in the knowledge of uh, formation of complex molecules in, in, in space, and this is very important for uh, areas of uh, the, related with formation of, of life. Um, I, I think that's very interesting to, to, to analyze this also, the SKA, in, in terms of the momentum of astronomy. Uh, in the last decades, we, we, we have been really in the revolution in, in, in terms of our ability to detect the cosmos. So besides uh, light, in the last, uh, say, 10, 20 years, we are now detecting gravitational waves, which is the most, uh, uh, the, the, the novelty of the, the last uh, five years, neutrinos and uh, cosmic rays. And this uh, puts a new paradigm for astronomy of the 21st century. For the very first time, we will be able to investigate the phenomena as a whole, and, uh, and this has an immense potential for discovery. Um, sometimes I give this, this, this example of uh, when you do a checkup. Uh, you, you, you have to, to, to do different uh, tests, uh, blood exams, uh, X-ray plates, magnetic resonance, for instance. And only when you have all these different uh, um, tools, to, to, it's the only way to understand the whole of your body, to understand what's going on uh, with your body, because you are probing completely different components of your body. Of your body. And uh, in, in astronomy, it's exactly the same. Uh, we are in a moment that we can get different kinds of information. So in this context, context uh, SK offers a massive amount of data, really massive, and this can be combined with different telescopes. Um, for instance, Pierre Roger give you information on cosmic rays, uh, uh, ice cube in neutrinos, LIGO, 
Virgo and the future lies in gravitational waves. Uh, and also all sky surveys like these emissions, uh, like Gaia that's already in operation, but also Eclipse, the future Athena, and which can also be follow up with the uh, base ground telescopes like ALMA, VLT, and, and future VLT. So there is a science enhancing, enhancing when all these different messengers are, are brought together. And uh, I can give you an example of my area of research which is the formation and the evolution of galaxies. Um, I, I do galaxies with that contain supermassive black holes. And uh, we know that at some point this, this system merge. Uh, nevertheless, there are very few known systems that, uh, that have been found in the act of merging. merging. And this introduced some stress in the most uh, accepted galaxy formation model. So we need to, to find more and we need to understand this, 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 this phase of the galaxy formation. Now, uh, SKA is going to be really very important for this kind of, of, of studies because, because it probes a, a vast uh, number of systems. We need statistics. And so we can try to pinpoint uh, uh, some of these of these uh, systems, and then we have to do the follow up in other wavelengths. Uh, to give you an example, we are coordinating a, a key science project with the VLBI SKA working group, where we propose to combine SKA with VLBI interferometer, and then to combine this with Gaia data in a way that is a better way to pinpoint this kind of, of, of systems, which are uh, actually putative emitters of gravitational waves, neutrinos and cosmic rays. So by bringing all these different data together via a multi-messenger investigation, we will be in position to understand the genesis of the phenomena and I think for the very first time. Now, let me just uh, finish by saying something. Um, uh, when a new window is open, and since Galileo, this is always the case, unforeseen uh, discoveries happen. And I think this is one of the most exciting uh, parts of SKI. Uh, we want SKI for doing our science. We, we have an idea of what is going to happen. But I think that's really the most exciting is the, the things that we have no clue that are there and I am sure that uh, uh, SKA is going to help us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Sonia. I indeed, right? I mean, the I think two key messages from you, uh, the multi-message era of astronomy that we are living in today, I and mean, that's that's for sure, right? We have information uh, about the uh, about the physics uh, uh, from all over, not only from light or from radiation, right? Uh, but also from, from particles and other things. And uh, what you said at the end, right? I mean, we, we plan those facilities based on science case because this is what we need to do. But when you, we actually push the, push the button and start operations, a whole universe emerged from that, right? And it has always been like that. So um, I'm, we, we're gonna always stay tuned uh, to all the, uh, the um, amazement that you're gonna, you're gonna be witnessing uh, in, the, in the coming years with SK. Now, I'd like to move to our second astronomer in the, in the panel here, um, Dalmiro, uh, who is from Porto University and also a member of the Engage SKA. Uh, Dalmiro, uh, Sonia mentioned um, large scale structures, um, cosmology, formation, evolution of galaxies. I mean, you are in a in a much closer right object, right? Your scientific interest lies on, on our sun and uh, and and also on, on, on space weather, right? How how uh, SK we're gonna bring any new knowledge on solar physics and what is the link with the space weather? Well, it's uh, the link with SK and solar physics. It's a bit complicated because the sun for most radio astronomers. Is a nuisance. It's 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 basically a huge source of noise. As, as Sonia told, the, the major characteristic of SKA is resolution. So we're going to see a lot of detail in our objects and sensitivity. 
And I'll just give you a small example. Astronomers like to, talk, uh, to use this unit called Jansky, and SKA will basically get sensitivities around the micro a few micro Janskys or at like tens of micro Janskys. So you're talking about something quite uh, very, very sensitive. For the sun, uh, the typical, we don't use a different un unit, which is the solar flux unit. And the solar flux unit is 10,000 Janskins. So they want something which is a million times smaller than a Jansky. And we typically deal with something that are uh, a million times larger than a Jansky because we, the sun typically emits at around 100 solar flux units. So it's, it's a huge, the sun is a huge emitter. So it's, it's a, something that is basically for them or for the most radio astronomers that will be in the SK project is a huge source of noise. Uh, of course, for some, if you remember the, the antennas that Phil showed at the beginning, we have these nice dishes, the big dishes that are big and you point to the sources, and you have those non-moving pieces of wire that you saw that, basically, they're very sophisticated, but in practice, they, do, they don't move. Those will always see the sun and will probably, I expect, they will be giving us images of the sun, and this will give us spectra, uh, which are an, an important ingredient uh, for space weather studies. Uh, so basically from those we'll be able to basically not image, not exactly the sun we want, but really all the, the sun we are used to, like the solar disk, but basically the plasma that uh, is above the sun at a certain like two solar radii or something like that. So uh, one million kilometers from the sun. So this is basically the information we'll get. This will tell us if there were explosions of the sun, if there were particles emitted on the sun. So that's an important aspect. So these are the things that disturb the Earth, the things that can damage satellites, that can cause aurora. So, so basically for the Australian telescopes, what we call the SK low, we expect basic to get regular images. For the dishes, it's, it's very, it's, for us, it's good, but for them, we, also, we are also a source of noise. Every time they want to observe a, a, a galaxy far away, they want to observe an interesting object in our galaxy, they are going to get um, flickering in their data. They are going to get what we call scintillations, and they are going to get uh, noise, and this is due to solar activity. Not directly, you don't image the sun, you are very far away from the sun, but uh, the Earth's ionosphere, which is caused by space weather, the wind that comes from the sun that is caused also again by space weather, so it's things that the sun is always emitting, they, we, this will cause uh, basically noise in the images. And so for the, these moving uh, dishes that we saw there, these nice big antennas that track the objects, they, I do not expect them to image directly the sun because it's as I said, the intensities are so big and you don't really uh, gain anything from it. But there will be solar signal in their image. There will be solar weather uh, effects there. There will be basically what for them is noise, for the solar, uh, for the heliophysicists is data. And so uh, basically every time uh, there will be an observation from the SKA, people in the ionospheric and uh, heliospheric community will basically getting also data. So it's, 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 it, it's something that will be, for us, it will be fun to, to try to extract this kind of information from the data because it's going to be um, not, not, not as, we'd prefer to have a solar dedicated instrument, of course, but this is what we'll have. and. Uh, but it's going to be very important. It's going to be very important because uh, of the size of the instrument. Okay, uh, the the SK will basically give you a vision of the of many different objects that were seen by many different telescopes. This gives you a lot of lines of sight. So, when you're trying to make a map, let's say of the Earth's atmosphere, it will give you a resolution that we currently don't have. If you're trying to get a map of, let's say, uh, solar wind, this very huge clouds of plasma that the sun emits at um, millions of kilometers per hour that are, that are followed also by 
uh, energetic particles that can uh, damage satellites or kill us, uh, astronauts in space and that will probably damage any mission that you want to send to Mars. We'll be able to basically make a 3D model of the heliosphere or of these things moving out with the impressive detail. Of course, this means only about the hours of operation for us or SK, but it's still, uh, it's still it's going to give us unprecedented uh, coverage. Now, for the other aspect that Sonia talked about, which is multi-messenger, well, in solar physics, uh, basically, we have the three things. We have people do, who are not radio astronomers that use radio data, as I said, because radio data is one of the best ways for us to know if there was a shock wave on the sun, if there was a major explosion, or if any plasma cloud is coming towards the Earth. So people that are not radio experts will use this data. And so if, but this means that we'll have to have a catalog of events processed events and that's where the SRCs enter because the one of the good things about SKA is that in the past using radio data is what was very complicated for people that are not radio astronomers. Basically you needed to calibrate the data, you needed to process the data and then you need some knowledge on the physical processes there. SKA, the SRCs will already provide you calibrated processed data. So uh, you still need, of course, to, to be knowledgeable about the processes, but there's an entire chain of, uh, that has to do with getting the images or getting the spectra or getting the information you need. That will be the, that the science pipelines will take care for you. And this will be very important for the uh, non, non people that are not radio astronomers by yeah. my formation like me. So that's, that's important. That's one of the things that yeah that SKA is probably going to allow people that are not uh, radio astronomers to, uh, to use or, or radio data much more efficiently than they did in the past. Yeah. So, Damir, thank you very much, because this is a perfect uh, bridging. I mean, this was not uh, foreseen, but I thank you for this, to exactly our ne next guest. So thank you very much for uh, this connection between solar physics and space weather, which is a very practical issue that we have, especially also for the agency, right, for Portugal Space. Uh, but this is a very nice um, bridging uh, point to the uh, to our next guest, uh, Peter Quinn, okay, that exactly to talk about this, uh, what it means in terms of data challenges and everything. But uh, I would like to, uh, to first introduce Peter. Okay, uh, so we have Professor Peter Queen with us. Uh, Peter is the director of the International Center for Radio Astronomy Research in Australia, uh, ICRA. And I'd like to ask you to tell us a, a little bit about how ICRA came to be. Uh, so what was the motivation right, from West, Western Australia, where you are located, Peter, to invest in the ICRA before Australia was even selected as one of the host countries for, for SKA? And how this decision uh, generated benefits not only on science but also helped Western Australia to diversify uh, its economy. And, and later, right, a second question uh, to give us a, a glimpse to the audience of the data challenge that SKA represents. So welcome, Peter, and thank you, thank you very much for being here. Sure, thank you. Nice to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, yes, ICRA, the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research, is a a purpose-built organization was built here in Perth in Australia for a number of reasons, but largely to make sure that um, the returns and the science and the good things that this project is de developing in many ways is in Australia, delivered to Australia, to the community in Australia, and is also part of the international effort. So it's a it's meant to anchor in some sense the project into Australia to basically make sure it's well connected. So we began 12 years ago with basically a couple of people. Now we're 200 staff and students, uh, and mostly internationals and a mix of internationals and Australians. So it's a it's a, a great organisation to be a part of. It's not a classical organisation. Uh, it's not a, just a pure research institute. We have, of course, astronomy researchers to do astronomy and be part of the SKA uh, exploration of the universe. But also we have engineers and we have data scientists and we have education and outreach people. And that mix is kind of the mix which we wanted to develop to be part of the story of the SKA from its 
concepts, its requirements, to its design, to its implementation, and to basically then to actually use the SKA. So to get across that uh, that journey, you need, of course, the astronomers and the scientists, but the engineers, the data sciences, the people to communicate that uh, and to, to capture it for the rest of the world. So it's a purpose-built organization, and it's got those mix of skills, and it's not the sort of classical you know, research organization you'd find inside a, a university, for example. And in fact, we're a combination. We're two universities here, the University of Western Australia and Curtin University working together. So a joint venture of universities to, to, as well. So we have been fortunate to be part of the sort of process of designing uh, the SKA in particular as part of with, with colleagues all around the world, with teams that are international teams. Um, one of the particular things that um, I want to talk about and just highlight is an area where we can see really f now the ability of the SKA to what we call translate, to actually take the skill set that we've developed for the SKA, building and designing the SKA and running the SKA, how it moves and has connections to other kinds of things. So one of the jobs we're responsible for uh, here at, at, at uh, here in Munich, here in not in Munich but in in, in Australia is um, to de to design the fiber optic system that basically uh, connects. Um, the com central computer system to all the dishes of the SKA mid telescope in South Africa. So there's a large run of fiber optic cable that goes from the central computer system all the way, many tens, even hundreds of kilometers out to all the dishes. As signals go along fiber optic cables, of course, they're distorted. The fiber optics uh, change temperature and they, they move slightly. So very fine optical signals that go along these cables, when they get from A to B, they have to be corrected in various ways. Um, and that correction technology is something we've actually perfected here inside of ICRA so that the signals can move from the central uh, computing system out to the dishes and back again with some fidelity. So that's something we're building for SKA uh, mid-telescope to be deployed in a few years' time. The team, the astrophotonics team here at ICRA that, that uh, designed this, um, also realized that this method of correcting uh, basically optical signals could be applied elsewhere. It could be applied maybe for the movement of light signals that, laser beams carrying signals through the atmosphere of the Earth. So the Earth, of course, is is a turbulent medium. If you send light through it, as all astronomers know, stars twinkle. And so laser beams, as they send through the Earth's atmosphere, also twinkle in various ways. So this same correction technology, which we're using for the SKA signals to the dishes, in fact, is capable of correcting the laser beams which are sent through the Earth's atmosphere. And would be, this has now been tested over distances of tens of kilometers. In fact, the astrophotonics group now holds the world's record uh, for the most most accurate laser transmission through the atmosphere, and based upon basically this uh, SKA technology. So, why is that? Why is that important? Well, we want to be able to communicate with satellites and the Moon and Mars with much greater bandwidth than we do currently do. At the moment, all the signals we get from our satellites come through radio waves. And so we get megabits worth of information. And that's the limiting factor for many satellites is how much data they can send back to the Earth. If we go from megabits to gigabits, which you can do with optical technology, all of a sudden you've got a much uh, more efficient way of, of sending data down to the Earth and sending data from other places. So um, in a few years, so, this is what we're developing basically is an optical ground station network that sends laser beams from telescopes to low Earth orbit satellites with great fidelity and a much higher bandwidth. That's the system we are currently uh, exploring with industry. Uh, in fact, uh, just a few weeks ago, we won a contract with NASA to support the Artemis mission. So this means uh, when the first woman lands on the moon in a few years' time, uh, we'll be able to see HD television of her. Uh, thanks to uh, high fidelity laser beams, which are brought to you by SKA technology. So it's it's a great story of how the sorts of things we're doing for the SKA in many spaces, and that's just one example. There are many others, which are now, we're now mature enough, IPRA and the team, uh, the skills that have been developed there, and this is happening elsewhere in the world as well. Um, the skills we've developed over the last 10 to 15 years of being part of the SKA project, having these institutes with all these skill sets together, those skills now are very translatable to many, many areas. Data, the other question you asked, is exactly another area where this is true. So the, the data challenge of the SKA uh, is significant. As I said, the, the kinds of data volumes that the telescopes, that the observatories will have to deal with are comparable to the entire internet traffic of today. So you can imagine what, how much data is buzzing around the internet today. That's a kind of comparable to the data traffic that will be in the SKA telescope networks when it's switched on in 
eight to ten years from now. So we need to be able to take that data, to process that data pretty much in real time, send scientific results to um, some key locations in South Africa and Australia, and then pump it out from there through this regional center network to the rest of the world. So that's a data challenge which is comparable to the Googles and the Amazon-like challenges. And so that attracts industry in immediately, all the, all the companies that are interested in upping their game in terms of their sensor networks, in terms of their exploration, whether it's exploring the sky or the ground or wherever it is, and what kind of volume of data traffic are looking to the SKA project for insights in how to do this, and how to do it um, efficiently, okay? So how do you do it and still, as Phil said before, use green computing, use green technology, not to use uh, millions and millions of dollars in power bills, but achieve a computing solution that does that without having to go into, uh, you know, having a huge fraction of the, of the project's uh, money go into power bills, etc. That's one challenge. The other challenge is just the algorithmic challenge. How do you take the algorithms which we currently use in science, in astronomy in particular, but other kinds of science, in geophysics, etc., in meteorology, how do you take those algorithms and make them work at 100 times bigger problem? Okay, because usually when you scale things up by a factor of a few, it tends to break or become very inefficient. So how do you scale up um, the problem set? And so the SK is teaching us new ways of scaling up fairly conventional and simple methods of things like Fourier transform, which are one of the basic technologies that we use in radio astronomy. How do you make those things work at 100 times bigger scale than we currently do? And that's applicable to anything that's doing imaging from three-dimensional data, whether it's medical data from inside of people, outside of people, uh, stuff in the earth, stuff in the ocean, stuff in the sky. Um, this kind of um, scaling up of our algorithmics is something the SK is, is building us uh, with us as well. So it's it's a great, um, we, we're very attractive in some sense to industry who are interested in these big data problems, but we're also trying to make sure we can deliver to the per people's desktops the kinds of scientific opportunities that the SK is capable of. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, Sorry, I have a strong feedback from, yeah, okay, no, okay, thank you. So thank you very much, Peter. It was, uh, was, in, was a very nice summary uh, on, on, on those challenges and also the benefits, right? Both the, uh, the, uh, the communication, the space communication, uh, and all the, uh, all the impact that could have, right, in terms of the upstream and downstream um, activities on the space and also the, the scaling up the algorithms, right? We all, we, I'm a sort of astronomer, right? We all know how, how bad we code. Now it worked in our small problem, but when we try to scale up Zap, right, as you said, so it's a, it's a, it's a very nice um, intervention. Thanks a lot, Peter, for that. So uh, about this, about this challenge, right, that you, that Peter mentioned, the, uh, the, that the, the volume of data, right, that is comparable to the, uh, to the present day internet. Uh, I, I invited to this panel, uh, Dr. Jean Ferreira, right, as, uh, as we heard the. Uh, I mean, SKUs generate an amazing volume of data, right? From so, if we if we talk about the process data uh, that has to be uh, used by the end user, we are still talking about data sets that cannot be easily stored or manipulated in one's personal desktop. So if, even if you, uh, even more if you consider that a team of researchers right, uh, will get together, bring data sets from different facilities to be analyzed. Uh, simultaneously to get a full picture of the physics behind the data, not only SKA data, as uh, Sonia mentioned at the beginning, uh, it's a multi messenger astronomy today. So uh, you are the director of the uh, scientific compute unity of the FCT. So the F FCCN has an amazing portfolio of services to provide connectivity, processing power, and allow for collaboration, right? Could you share with us some examples that uh, uh, that teams or, or collaborations that use the FCCN services that looks like the scenario that we're going to meet soon uh, when SKA is in operations? John, welcome, John. Well, thank you, thank you for for this invitation, and and thank you, and I, I would like to just to 
quick word regarding this uh, this question. Uh, first of all, uh, SKA is, is is quite a big new challenge. Uh, it's bigger than than we usually see in Portugal. So it's it was already presented by previous speaker, speakers the the, the the huge challenge that that this, this is. In our history at FCCN, uh, the most similar challenge that we had was more than ten years ago when the Large Hadron Collider was being prepared to, to start operating. So we had a partnership with uh, the, the Portuguese uh, high, high energy physics uh, community to, to, to build a data center and to provide in Portugal a tier two processing, uh, processing uh, center for the, the Large Hadron Collider from CERN. This is the most similar uh, example that I can recall even so, it's much, much, much smaller than than what I hear from from um, from SKA. I understand that SKA will have some kind of distributed uh, processing centers uh, that will also cover Europe. So, in case of Portugal, the question is that we will have one of such centers or not. Uh, and but a lot of definition must still be done by the SKA teams regarding how these uh, data centers or these data processing places will operate. Will they be commercial? Will be, they be in-house? Will they be partnerships between academia or research networks and, 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 and SKA? But so this is not known right now, but so I, I will just co go quickly through the building blocks that we have we have in Portugal and the building blocks are the network the computing power and and the data starting from the network network i think it's it's in quite good uh, st uh, shape right now we are finishing a big upgrade at our national backbone and the JN network in europe is also uh, implementing a big upgrade on their network so this is this is i think the the the, the bit the building block that is better we also have the, the new cable to, to latin america being uh, starting operating uh, between portugal and brazil and maybe this cable could be in the, in the future be used to reach also uh, south africa through through other cables i don't know but the, the capacity is there so the network i think is is more or less uh, up to speed and also in the in, in the forthcoming connecting Europe facility there are a chunk of money for uh, federating uh, computing resources and data resources in Europe. I don't know if it will cover SKA, but I, I, I suppose yes, because it's, it will be one of the largest data resources that uh, Europe will have in, 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 his, in his area of, of uh, in, in his geography. Then we, we have to, to look at the computing pillar. Computing pillar in Portugal now is also gaining speed. Uh, we will host one of the new European uh, HPC resources, the Deucalin computer in the north of Portugal. Uh, we will also participate in, in the future Barcelona Supercomputing Center new machine, uh, Mare Nostrum 5. So this, this is all, we are getting more and more resources in Portugal to do data processing in, in the next two years. Uh, these, these are for the HPC model only. Uh, if you are talking about distributed computing, there we have very little resources right now, and the resources that we have are mostly used, but maybe we can get an upgrade in, in the next uh, round of funding from, from Portugal and, and, and from Europe. So I think that in the computing part, we are get, getting up to speed, uh, but not yet as good as in the networking part. And then I would I, I left to, to the last one, in the data infrastructure, so data centers for holding all this data, that's where we have to put most of our, our effort because I think that we are still quite underdeveloped uh, in that area in Portugal. There are commercial operators, not, not, not that many, but most of them are, are, are geared towards the, the SME, smaller and medium enterprises, and these are very low power, uh, low power uh, data centers, uh, and and they are quite expensive for such a ma massive, massive uh, endeavor. So I, I think that we really must to focus our attention uh, in the case of Portugal on which model we will try to 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 build for having a, a center, a SKA center, center in Portugal. I. I we have the example that said with the large Hadro collider. In that case, we built in-house uh, a, a very nice data center that is still operating today and has a lot of other uh, usage for science. Uh, maybe this could be an, an, an idea or an example, a template for SKA. Uh, we are we are open to to collaborate in the in this partnership for that. So, 
Thank you very much. I think it was was nice to hear about about the building blocks that uh, they are there, and uh, that we need to start discussing right uh, how to strengthen those those building blocks and, and get ready for, for the challenge. Right? Uh, I'll come back to you later with a related question, okay, on on education, okay, and uh, so I'll, please stay 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 there. So thank you very much. Now I, uh, I'd like to move now to the uh, to the only. Uh, uh, colleagues in the panel that are in the in the venue at the venue now, uh, Dr. Ricardo Armas, uh, you are Ricardo. You are the business uh, development director of Critical Software. Uh, can you hear me well, Ricardo? Uh, yes, I can. Can you hear me well as well? Yes, yes, great, great. Good. So, okay. So I'd like to ask you uh, to describe your experience with with SKA so far, right? From the point of view uh, of, of of business, business development, what makes it interesting to participate in a project like SK? I think that's my, my question, right? From, from the, your, your position of, of, of representing the business industry. And this is an open-ended question, so feel free to take any angle that you, that you wish here, okay? So I'm, I'm personally curious about, about the market size, okay? I guess in the observatory like um, SK, ESO, and others, they do not provide per se a market which may be big enough, right? So how how you actually uh, uh, from from again from a business point of view, how you actually expand what you do with with an observatory like SKA and transform this into into a into a business opportunity? Thank you very much. And please uh, feel free to add any feel free to add anything that you you might yes. relevant. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. So we have heard until now different perspectives from social to science to economic, political. Now moving into a slightly different perspective from a private, private company uh, like the one I work for, Critical Software, based in Portugal but with offices across the world. And we have been involved, just to give you some background, we have been involved in three different work packages of the square kilometer array mainly uh, through our offices in the UK and the relationship we have with, with the universities of Manchester and Oxford and so on. Those three work packages, so science data processor, processing data, telescope manager nowadays called OMC, so the component that, uh, as you all know here in the panel, that manages and controls the whole infrastructure and the SADT. Uh, we have worked on the, the pipelines, so in the data processing itself, optimizing the algorithms and the way the data is processing, and on the infrastructure side, analyzing how the whole infrastructure is designed and being built in order to ensure that it will not, or to reduce as much as possible any potential failure. And how is this work relevant for a company like ours? There are different areas in which it is uh, extremely uh, relevant. The first one, the marketing perspective. Marketing, not marketing, not just the marketing to promote ourselves in front of potential customers, that's also important, but marketing to promote ourselves in front of potential employees. Nowadays, the human resources market, let's call it like that, it's not an easy one, and we have to convince potential employees with challenges, and challenges like the one in the square kilometer array is not something that we can find uh, 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 on a regular basis. So that's really important for us to challenge the people to, and to convince them to work with us. From that perspective, so marketing on a second area, so the technical challenge itself. We have, we have uh, seen and we have heard the amount of data that will be uh, processed or collected, uh, stored, processed. And uh, when we talk about those buzzwords, the big data, uh, there is no big data as the square kilometer away. The amount of data that will be collected is just of unprecedented uh, 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 sizes. And for that, in order to process that, you have to use, of course, artificial intelligence. It's, there is no other way to do it. So those two topics, well, and in fact, the third one, the high-processing computing. So using these three, this is the place to use it. 
So it's something that we are really interested in, not just to increase, uh, uh, to, by being part of such a challenge, of course we are able to collect that knowledge and then to reuse it in other markets. But I will come back to that potential reuse just uh, briefly, because before that there is still a third area in which, uh, uh, which is not so known, but it's also a good challenge for the SKA and for companies like ours, the management challenge. SKA will use, will be, at least to my knowledge, is the first entity in what regards the, these science programs to have a safe uh, approach, so a safe organization, meaning that uh, agile approach will be used from top to bottom. It's not that common to see uh, 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 these type of approaches. And well, uh, uh, in my company, we work in different markets from finance to space to the aerospace, defense, and so on. And we see these type of approaches quite often in uh, uh, financial institutions or programs being executed by uh, uh, finance institutions, insurance, and so on, but in safety critical markets, so space, aerospace, railway, automotive, it's not that common. But we see a shift coming and we are trying to adjust ourselves and, well, the SKA is also an opportunity there. It will be the first, at least to my knowledge, the first program, scientific program using such an approach. So with all the knowledge, technical and management knowledge that we, uh, 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 any of us, can acquire by being part of such program, we can, of course, reuse a lot of this knowledge in other markets. When we talk about data processing, <laughs> increasing or improving the, the, the data processing chains, let's talk about these different markets I was talking about. So looking at the financial markets, for, for example, the, the fraud detection. So there are millions of transactions and you need to process it very, very fast. So it's, it's a good way to, to use uh, uh, the processing chains that are being developed in the scope of this square kilometer array. Uh, in the automotive, processing the data being collected by the different sensors and supporting the autonomous driving, for example. The railway market, monitoring ra railway train, uh, train stations, trying to identify specific patterns of the people in the train stations. So there are so many and potential ways of reusing this knowledge and this technology and the processes themselves, which is, of course, something that uh, uh, many companies around the globe are interested in, in being part of. And the fifth area, which is also extremely relevant to business per se. Okay, there is a commitment from Portugal, if I'm not mistaken, around 29, 30 million euros with a potential participation in three or four different work packages, including the science data processor and the OMC, so the component that controls the whole infrastructure. Those are extremely important and those cover these different topics I was talking about. I don't know if you have any specific question in what regards the reuse. Please feel free to ask. Uh, no, no, I think uh, you, I, I thank you very much. I mean, it was a very comprehensive uh, view and uh, I think your point, right? From, from the science, from being an, an attractive uh, employer, right? Attracting talents, as you said, I mean, very well. It's, it's difficult today. Also, as a as SK, as a trading platform, I think, I mean, it was, I, I really enjoyed your, your intervention. So, so thanks a lot, Ricardo. Uh, I'll just remind to the uh, to the audience uh, you, that you can post your questions on the chat and YouTube. So we keep looking into that. So uh, later on, uh, we might come back to those questions later. Okay. So thank you very much. I'd like to to move on uh, after this very interesting perspective uh, from from Ricardo. I'd like to move on to Dr. Lourdes uh, Verdes Montenegro. Lourdes, you are a, a senior you are researcher. A senior researcher at the Institute of Astrophysics of Andalusia. Sorry, I have a strong feedback. Yeah, sorry, I have a strong feedback. Uh, so could we mute for a so while? Could... Yes. That belongs to the Spanish National Research Council, right? And the, you are also the coordinator of the Spanish participation in, in SKA. So Lourdes, I'd like to ask you uh, to elaborate on two topics. Uh, first, 
a, a quick summary of the Spanish participation uh, on, on SKA so far, so maybe from the uh, scientific community perspective and also from, from the industry. And a second question, because I know that you are a champion of open science, right? I, I'd like to ask you to, to elaborate on this concept of open science and how it connects with, with SKA. So thank you very much. Ruth. Thank you for being here. Um, well, Spain uh, has been participating since the early days in the square kilometer already. And I can probably speak better for the last decade because it's when I started coordinating the, the participation of Spain in this project. And since then, we have been in, in very close contact with, with the industry, with the scientific community, with the ministry, and with Portugal, by the way. Uh, I think we, we started, uh, when I started, we, we immediately um, started to create uh, synergies between our countries and sharing um, ways to get our countries in, engaged with, with the project. And I think this is something that, that is, is going on and will go on in different aspects in which I think we share a lot of, of things. For example, well, uh, going to, to the Spanish participation, um, the Spanish community is uh, deeply involved in the, in the different science working groups of the Square Kilometer Array. Uh, because uh, I think that this uh, project touches um, areas in which, um, in all the areas that are covered, there is um, there are initiatives or expertise in our community, and uh, but also we have been involved in the design phase of the of the observatory, um, in the science platform design. Uh, or in something that uh, is very different, like the timing of the signals. I think that when Sonia was explaining the different uh, science cases, for some of them, it is very important that the signals that arrive to the, to the different telescopes and then to the central correlator are very well synchronized. And so here Spain could transfer expertise uh, applied, Spanish expertise applied to the, to the CERN uh, and transfer it to the square kilometer array so that, uh, for example, when pulsars are observed, because they, they, their signals are of the order of milliseconds in many occasions, you have to be more accurate than that in, in order to gather the signals and, and have uh, information that uh, in this case is very relevant, for example, to, to test the general relativity. And um, so I think that the the opportunity to be part of, of this project uh, um, internally has generated a lot of, of uh, synergies uh, in between institutions, among institutions, but also with the industry. We also always try to, to um, make engineers uh, understand why we are so crazy to want to build these uh, huge facilities in order to see tiny things, very distant things. And I think that engineers really appreciate to know uh, why they are doing this, this uh, effort to, to do what uh, I think uh, that, uh, well, silently engineers think we are a bit, a bit uh, <laughs> out of our minds. But at the end, this is synergy between uh, people who are really enthusiastic to do something and very practical people are, are, are engineers who know how to do it. That's uh, something that um, I think is very important to, to, to maintain in a, in a community. And um, from a personal point of view, or human, let's say human, because I don't want to focus it on me, I think that for Spain, uh, not only joining the, the Square Kilometer Array organization, which is the, 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 the previous, um, uh, let's say, um, the previous um, in, um, organizational environment in 2018, but being a part of the, of the first uh, council of the SK Observatory, all these things, um, you know that are, you are living a historical event uh, because as it has been said in many different ways in this, in this panel, uh, SK is, is a project that really touched on many, many different things and has a lot of impact in, in uh, different aspects. And I could maybe emphasize two for, for Spain and probably because of also of synergies with, with Portugal, 
which I think uh, is nice because I see here good friends that uh, we have been working together, like Sonia, Darmiro and others. Uh, I think that the role of SK in the ecological transition is something very important. I think that uh, Iberia has a lot to, to say about green uh, energies. And also we are very interested in this big data science uh, to, to, be, to become open science. So I think that this, these things uh, made us in Spain to, to start some years ago to create the, the initiative to, to host an SK regional center. Uh, I am part of this committee that, that Peter uh, is chairing to be sharing to, to organize this international network. And that's another really exciting opportunity to be connected with colleagues over the world in, in things that we don't even know yet uh, how we are going to, to do with some of them, because uh, this, is, this is what happens when you work in the, in the edge of, of the science and of the technology. So, uh, thank you very much, Lourdes. I, thank you very much, Lourdes. I, <clears throat> And could you please move to Macro? Yes, thank you. I'd like to move now to uh, to 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 Dan okay, uh, Dan uh, Dutua uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, other aspects uh, related to being connecting those those all what has been discussed here in a kind of a systemic uh, view, right, of all those elements. So Dan is the Deputy Director General of the International Cooperation and Resources at the Department of Science and Innovation of the South African Government. And Dan is also the, the Vice Chair of the, of the SK Observatory Council. Okay. So I'd like to hear your view as a, Dan, as a government official on the importance of this to South Africa to be a member of the, of the SK Observatory and how this membership becomes a policy tool uh, to help moving from a commodity-based society or economy to a knowledge-based society. Okay. So could you, and, and, and maybe a second aspect uh, uh, is on the science diplomacy, right? I mean, SKA is, is a wonderful example of peaceful collaboration. So you have countries from Asia, Africa, Europe, and, and Oceania, right, all working together, right? And your experience, how could this collaborative mindset be communicated to society at large, so to inspire the regional and international cooperation in, in other areas. Okay, those two questions. Okay. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you very much, Claudio. Can you hear me well? Perfect. Good. Um, first of all, I should say I'm absolutely delighted to join this discussion because South Africa and Portugal enjoy long-standing and strategic bilateral cooperation in science, technology, and innovation. And we, we, we are really much appreciative of the efforts led by Minister Hetor, the FCT, and indeed the broader Portuguese science community to ensure that Portugal is now a full member of the, of the SKA community. Uh, indeed, Portugal's commitment to, to, to global science, you mentioned open science, of course, Minister Gago was the, the, the world champion for, for open science, have always inspired us in, in South Africa. So we, we are really value this engagement, not only bilaterally, but also multilaterally um, in initiatives such as the Air Centre. Now, from a, a, a perspective from South Africa, from a country which has the, the huge privilege and opportunity to, with our friends in Australia, actually host the telescopes there, there are three key reasons why our government has decided to, to invest in uh, and, and, and support, support the project. Now, like countries and economies across the world, we firmly believe that investment in science, technology and innovation is absolutely critical for, for economic growth. But we are too small to try and do everything. So we had several years ago had to make smart choices and we had to identify a few areas in which we prioritize our, our, our investment in order to have that significant return of investment, not only in terms of capabilities, scientific and human capabilities, but also economic return. And because of the ideal observation conditions in the Southern Hemisphere, specifically in Africa, we've always been determined that astronomy should be one of those priority focus areas. So for us, the, the Square Kilometer Array is really a flagship force of African science. It shows what a country with, scientifically speaking, maybe smaller like South Africa can do if you have a strategic focus with determined investment. 
because it's our ambition, and that's an ambition shared across Africa, that not only do we want to use science as a driver for economic growth and social development, but we also want to be an active partner in the global enterprise of frontier research. And this is what, in, in our view, makes the Square Kilometre Array also so unique, because it puts Africa, gives Africa a seat at a table for what will be the world's most exciting uh, frontier science project in the in the 21st century. But then, of course, it's about building, secondly, those cap capabilities. And when we speak about a knowledge economy, when we speak about the so-called fourth industrial revolution, what is at the heart of, the, of, 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 of those platforms? It's digital technologies. And as Full Diamond, Lourdes, and many others have spoken about, the Square Kilometer Array is all about advancement and innovation, whether it's in super, uh, super or high-performance computing, about big data management, high-speed uh, co communication networks. So through invest, you, by using the Square Kilometer Array as a vehicle, we have been able to develop those capabilities for South Africa to leverage opportunities in the big data economy. Phil Diamond spoke earlier about how our engineers who are building the Mirka telescope had been responsible for the ventilator program responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. But um, also equally important was that we were able to use the capabilities in data science, in modeling and analysis, which we've built largely through our involvement in the SKA, also to provide our government with decision and advisory support uh, services to respond to COVID-19. But then perhaps the third reason which should, should never be um, underestimated is the Square Kilometer Array is about inspiration. It's about dreaming. And in South Africa, it has really been at the forefront of our public communication efforts not only to uh, excite the South African population a lot at large about the tremendous potential of science, but specifically to attract a next generation of young scientists and engineers into this, 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 this very exciting field. And they, they can certainly not be a more exciting project, discovering the origins of the universe, by which one can motivate the youth to follow career, careers in, in, in in science. So those were, are, are some of the, the key drivers, which means that a square kilometer array and our participation in this enterprise is really at the heart of our science policy. But you also asked about, about science diplomacy. And, and I, I think the, the SKA is, is, is really a concrete manifestation, an excellent example of what science diplomacy should be all about. Because what is science diplomacy? When we speak about that, it's of course the interface between international relations and science is how do we use international cooperation to adv advance science. And throughout the SKA, the SKA has been quite innovative in developing new programs, new instruments, new methodologies to enable that international cooperation. Indeed, the very creation of the intergovernmental organization, um, the SKA Observatory, which brings together for the first time Asia, Australasia, Africa, Europe, and soon the Americas in an intergovernmental partnership for the specific purpose of science, that is quite unique and will offer many, many lessons as we seek to also reorganize international cooperation in science in the post-COVID-19 area. But it's also about, about, about science in diplomacy, as we've just spoken, and how do we use science, international partnerships of this kind, to respond, as Phil Diamond said, the social development goals and other shared, shared global challenges. But I think perhaps the, and you hinted at that, Claudio, the most important science diplomacy impact uh, of the SKA is that it really brings to the fore that unique ability of science to bring people together, to bring countries together, irrespective of geographic, cultural or linguistic differences we may have, different political orientations, different different government systems, but uh, to harness our ability to, to, to work together through the real realization that we are stronger when we are together, that when we share resources, where we share experience and expertise. And for me, that is a very powerful uh, message which the Square Kilometer Array sends and which certainly in the current uh, global environment we need more than ever. So, so thank you very much for, for this opportunity to, to, to speak to you and, and indeed best wishes to all our friends and partners in Portugal. I unfortunately won't be able to stay for the discussion. I, I'm incredibly sorry, but I have a very urgent government meeting for which I would have to leave. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Dan. I mean, <clears throat> I, mean I, I was really inspired by, uh, by, your, by your work. So thank you very much uh, for this. And it's not only on on paper, right? This is happening, right? So this is uh, this is uh, you know it's a it's a great key message that I thank you for being here and thank you for your time. Okay, so if you, if you feel free to disconnect and see you soon, hopefully. Okay.
Take care. So uh, indeed, right, we are running late. Uh, I would uh, like to invite uh, the, uh, the the members of the panel to a final um, a final closing statement uh, before we, we close the session. Okay. So maybe start uh, with, uh, with with Peter, a final final statement, final key message. Thanks very much. Uh, yeah, thank you. Look, I think we've heard it from several people in different ways, but I think it's it's obviously the excitement of the the potential of the SKA is an amazing thing for international science and amazing thing for our ability to discover the universe for sure. And we're doing it together. We have we have one sky to look at as a world and we, we're trying to do it together. And the SK organization is a as as Jan just said, an amazing example of a of an intergovernmental organization that covers the entire planet. I mean this is very much a an entire planet activity, not just only for science, but also the kinds of benefits that can come from for countries of all shapes and sizes that are joining in. We can see it happening already and it's going to continue to happen. Being part of these big projects is beneficial for many, many reasons. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, Lourdes, por favor. Adjectives, uh, because science is following the scientific methods uh, in this in this time of big data is becoming really um, difficult and difficult to make science transparent and um, and accessible to to everybody, and uh, so it requires tools, it requires rewards, but uh, it's uh, worthwhile because it's a way to to democ democratize the knowledge. And um, and I th I'm very proud to say that uh, SKA has open science in fun foundational uh, principles, has metrics of open science to measure the success of research. And just to, to give some uh, examples, um, because it could look like a fashion that we want to connect everything with achieving the sustainable development goals. But um, it's, it's very, very clear that uh, by opening science, we um, fulfill several goals like uh, goals like uh, good health or quality education because by opening science we accelerate the transfer of knowledge to society but also we speed up um, building skills and we help citizen science also um, we we contribute to equality because uh, the access to science will not depend if it is open on the on the economy of the of the people of the institutions of the countries and this is especially relevant in terms of, of gender equality or in very hierarchical, hierarchical systems in which uh, the work of some people are um, anonymized just because they are hidden in a, in a team. And sometimes that's where um, women suffer a lot from the anonymization of their work. So I, I as you said, I'm, I'm advocating for open science for long time because before it was a really fashion let's say uh, to say that but just because I think it's uh, something we have to do as scientists but also because uh, it's useful for uh, for many people and for to make uh, yes, science better then we make our planet better yeah thanks a lot Bruce. I mean this, uh, yeah, this lot, connection Bruce. between between the, the, the mission of the observatory and the, the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals, I think it's from, from the beginning, right, from the conception, I think it's a, it's a very powerful one. So, I mean, thank you very much for this uh, closing closing remark. Maybe moving to uh, uh, Ricardo, any closing remarks? Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. You can, you can hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. No. Well, from from uh, we have we have. Well, this is by far one of the <laughs> biggest challenges from the engineering perspective that we have in hand. When I say we, it's all of us, and it's something that we we should be looking at, not just from uh, um, 
not just, although extremely important from a scientific perspective, from a radio astronomy perspective, but also many other engineering fields should be looking at it because of its size, because of its challenge, because of the interaction and the connection between different countries, different entities, and the, the, the movement behind all these. Which is something extremely uh, uh, interesting to see and to watch and to see moving forward and to hopefully uh, in the short term have uh, uh, um, an operational system that we all can use, not just on the radio astronomy, as I was saying, but also use that knowledge and that uh, technology across many other fields. It's a real challenge and uh, it's really interesting to see. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ricardo. I think, yes, it's, it's a big challenge and uh, I think it, it's going to require all the efforts and all the brain that, uh, that we have to, to, to make the challenge a reality, right? So uh, thank you very much for, for being part of this. Uh, Sonia, uh, any, any closing remarks from your side? Yeah, just a, a brief, uh, a brief comment on uh, on the, the engagement of the, the scientific community in this project. I think that the Portuguese scientific community has been quite enthusiastic from the first uh, moment to with this project. Is now in, in in more than half of the scientific working groups participating quite actively. And uh, I think that we are now reaching a critical phase of team building, uh, not only <clears throat> this entails support to the existing teams that are very specialized uh, uh, researchers in the area, but also in the preparation for the new generations. And I think this is something that we really have to address because the, the, the people that are take the most of the SK is going to be the, gener the, the new generation in the next 10, 20 years, and they have to be trained now. So I, I really think that in this context, universities need to be caught upon and uh, should be sooner than, than later. And uh, in terms of the existing and future teams, um, uh, I think that uh, it really needs to have a strategic long plan to support these teams, at least for a period of 10 years. I, I think there is a good example in Portugal that was the, 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 the joining of Portugal with CERN, that after the joining, there was a, a kind of regular funding, uh, meaning predictable and stable uh, in place, and that allowed it for in the last 20 years to build a solid and leading community in the field of particle physics. And I think this should, in my opinion, be the paradigm for SPA in Portugal. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much. I think yes, you, you're right, right? Strengthening the, uh, in the, the scientific community behind uh, this is going to be the end users of SKA is the building block of, of to make all this of the systemic thing to work, right? So, yeah, you, you, you're right. So thanks a lot for this comment. Uh, uh, João, any any final thoughts? Well, very quickly to say that uh, from the national research and education perspective, I think that uh, there's a lot to be gained in working together for in, in finding the best uh, solutions. Um, that there was this, this reference from me, from uh, other speakers about the experience, uh, the past experience of CERN. Maybe we could find some ideas there. Uh, I agree with that. And uh, also develop specific uh, solutions for SKA that the SKA community and user community uh, will define. But uh, I think that the, there's, there's a, a big role to be played in, at, at several at several stages of the digital basic digital services for the not only the national research networks also the the, the regional research networks like GN or 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 Ubuntu Net Alliance in the case of, of South Africa or or Red Clara in in, in, in Latin America so mm -hmm. these these three local continental uh, national continental and then uh, intercontinental uh, networking uh, structures 
have a, a, a big uh, role to play in in um, uh, helping or uh, making SKA work in the future. So thanks a lot, Joel. Uh, Almiro, a final word from your side. Okay, so I mean, most of the speakers already said some pertinent points. One of the things that I, I learned from this project, and in fact, one of the things that we really we were so you know, the focus of Engage SKA is that th there is this tendency in Portugal for the scientists to want to join a project like this after they are built when you start doing science. And uh, in, for this project, we really wanted to be there since from the beginning, from the design phase, the bridging phase. And so we wanted to be there and follow the, the, the entire project. This is important because, well, the, for the science, it probably may not be important. For, for the other aspects, in particular for getting some involvement and return for the industry, I think it, it was very important. I mean, basically, being there uh, from the beginning and being part of, of this since inception, not just, let's say, in 2028 when it will be built, but f from let's, the last almost 10 years that we've been following this, it was, it was really, really important and it was really a focus of Engage SK because we joined the community, so Engage SK was formed by me, Sony and other colleagues that are not here. It was written by scientists, of course, but uh, we basically, most of the funding, in fact, uh, was not for hiring scientists or basically doing science. It was basically to support our activities for the design and bridging phases. Basically, we hired a lot of engineers. We bought infrastructure like uh, basically computer resources. So we have basically computer infrastructures where we're running some of our software packages and and that are being used or were being used by the the SK software teams. Uh, some of some of our platforms were being used for this development. So this was basically as a scientist. Uh, it was a scientist team that basically built the project, but we had this big focus that we really wanted this uh, to start to be broader in scope. We wanted to be also and engineering and uh, and basically to get industry involved since the beginning okay it was it, we were and in fact we probably would have probably been better for our careers if we had invested all the money that we got uh, to hire scientists writing papers and other stuff but we felt that it was really important to follow this uh, uh, since since the design just that Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Namira. I think we are really uh, running out of time, so uh, I already have the organizers asking me to, to free up the, uh, the auditorium. So I, I thank you, all of you, very, very much for this very interesting discussion that is just at the beginning, right? So we're going to have much more, uh, many more opportunities to, to keep discussing and, uh, and strengthening the, the, uh, the impact of the SKA across, across the site. So thank you very much for your time and see you soon and stay safe. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.